If you're interested in live streaming your D&D game, you may be looking for a template to help you design the overall look and feel of your gameplay. There are a variety of sources out there where you can purchase some great pre-developed templates, but why not put your own personal stamp on things by making one of your own? Stick with me and I'll show you how I do this for my campaigns. Welcome to Geek Philosophy, where we love geeky wisdom. If you're new to the channel, my name is Brian, and we release new videos weekly, so please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our content. Today I'll be building a template for the scene layout and overall design for a live stream D&D campaign, but if you're planning to live stream some other type of content, I think you'll benefit from this tutorial anyway. That said, I'll be focusing on the screen layouts for all of the major scenes applicable to most live stream D&D campaigns. And as always, I'm going to show you my way of handling the topic, which means it's not the right way or the only way, just my way of doing it and the way that works best for me. To build out a template, I'll be using Canva. And Canva is an online graphic design platform used to create graphic presentations, videos, and lots of other content. Canva is free to use, but there's also a pro version available that unlocks additional functionality in the application. I'm going to be using my Canva pro subscription today, so stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how you can get a free trial of the paid version of the application. Alright, let's roll. Before jumping right into Canva, let's do a little planning. While you can get some inspiration from all of the templates and elements and photos within the app, we still need a way to sort of narrow down our scenes to the ones that we're really going to be using for our live stream. And there are a lot of different approaches that we could take, but I like to focus on common scenes that are pretty much available for most actual play D&D streams. First, we'll design a starting soon screen. So this will give us the ability to leverage the overall design of this screen for the rest of the screen layouts. We'll modify it slightly to create a be right back screen and a thanks for watching screen. From there, we'll create a screen layout for displaying all of the video feeds from each member of the group. We'll also need a layout for the members' videos and additional content, something like a virtual tabletop or any other graphics that we want to display during the broadcast. So that means we'll be building at least five different screen layouts for our game. When you log into Canva, you'll see a main page with a lot of different suggested templates and even your recent designs. For us, we're going to start with the Create Design button, which will launch a bunch of suggested formats, but we're going to enter a custom size for our screen dimensions. Since we're planning to broadcast in 1080p, we'll enter 1920 by 1080 as the size of our design. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and save this design, and I'll call this one D&D Livestream Template. If you forget to do this, don't worry, Canva auto-saves with a generic name if you don't enter one. Based on the dimensions we entered, Canva will provide several templates. Most of these will either be presentation templates or video templates, since they fit the 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio. And you could totally start with one of these as a basis for your design. For the basic background, you could use a solid color, a gradient, geometric patterns, whatever you prefer. For my Relics of the Ancients campaign livestream, I found that starting with a photo in the background really helped me bring the design together, so I'm going to stick with that approach here. With the Canva Pro version, I get tons of stock photos and graphics I can choose from, so I'm going to see if I can find one that works for what we're looking for today. I mean, this is D&D, so I'm going to search for something like Forest Ruins and see if anything good pops up. All right, awesome. So now I want to bring some life to this design, so I think I'm going to go with some animation. Maybe some mist swirling around the scene would look kind of cool. So I'm going to search for an animated graphic or a movie file that looks good, and then I'm going to bring it over to the canvas and adjust the size, position, and transparency so I can make it look like it's all tied together. Once I have it set the way I like it, I'm going to lock this element so I don't accidentally mess up the positioning. I can do that with the lock icon here. I can unlock it later by just clicking the lock icon again. Okay, now let's bring in some text to establish the title of our scene. You can play around with all the fonts and sizes until you find one that looks good to you. I think I'll also add some color behind the text to make it pop a little better. The shape tools are great for this since you can adjust the size and the color and the transparency really quickly and I'll just add a little layering to send it behind the text. Much more readable, but I still want the text to jump out a little bit, so I'm going to select the Effects button to select additional design options for the text. 
I think lift works really well, and the slider lets me change the intensity so I can adjust it however I want. But you could go with any of the other effects that work best for your design, or leave this off altogether. Okay, with the text in place, I think it would be cool to add some graphics to make it a little bit more, I don't know, D&D-like. So let's see if we can find some swords or shields or something like that. Let's add a little bit more interest though by animating the text and the graphics. The animation button provides a bunch of options. I just try them one at a time until I like one. And yeah, this looks good. Since this is animated, I'll have to save it as a video file. Then when I bring it into my streaming software, I can just loop the video and it'll play as long as I'm running that scene. All right, so we did most of the work with the starting soon screen. So to create the be right back and thanks for watching screens, we can just duplicate that one and change the text a little bit. The duplicate page icon copies the entire layout that we just put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and add titles, kind of name my pages just to keep myself organized. From there, I can adjust the text on screen and all the animations were copied over so I don't need to change anything there uh, unless I want to. And with that, I've got three screen layouts ready to go. I export each one of these separately to have three different video files I can use for my scenes. And again, these will be animated and smoky and cool. All right, now we're getting into the most useful layout, adding the video feed placeholders for the participants. So I'm gonna duplicate the previous screen, but I'm going to get rid of everything but the background and the mist. I can go back and grab other things from the other pages if I need them later. Now I need to think about the overall position of the player videos. For the purposes of this example, I'm gonna assume that I've got four players plus a DM, but you can adjust this however you need to. And to do this, I'm gonna use a basic block to indicate where I'll position each camera or video feed. Quick note, I'm using green colored blocks. This is for two reasons. First, it lets me adjust the size and position of all the camera feeds and make sure I have everything just the way I want it. But second, streaming software applications usually use some type of green screen chroma key feature to replace the block with videos. I use Ecamm Live as my streaming software, so I don't really even need to worry about a cutout or green screen. Ecamm Live just lets me add the video feed right there and readjust the size and the border and positioning. It's, it's really easy. But these green boxes will still be helpful to kind of lay out the screen look the way I want it. For my block, I'm also going to search photos for a green screen image. I found that it gives me the best chance of matching the green screen color settings in the streaming software. And the alignment tools are really useful. The lines help me resize and reposition everything really quickly. And I can group or ungroup elements with either the Control G or Command G if you're on a Mac like me. And this makes it really easy to maintain the proportion without having to build things over and over. You can also just use the group button. Once I get the blocks where I want them, I can grab the text over from the other slide and reuse that text to make sure I'm on the same font. And I can use this to add the campaign title and some placeholders for the character names. Another option if I want to make this a PNG with some transparency is to save this file as an image file, a PNG. But I would likely need to remove that missed movie background that I've got, but it's completely up to you whether you want to use an image file or a video. Okay, now we're also gonna need a layout that includes all of the videos, but also gives us room to share other content and graphics on the screen. So to get started, I'm gonna duplicate the main layout, and I'm calling the main layout the one with all the video feeds just for simplicity's sake. And from here, I'm gonna just resize everything to leave enough screen real estate for other graphics in the future. I'm gonna add another green block to be a placeholder for any additional content that I have, just to make sure the layout works for me. And the process will be the same as everything I've already done. I'm going to speed things up so make it easier for you to see everything because I'm going to do a couple different layouts.
All right, so I have recently partnered with Canva and they've provided me with an affiliate link that you can use for a free 30-day trial of the pro version of the application. And the pro version, like I mentioned, has a ton of stock photos and video and audio and graphic assets and a bunch of other features. So if you're interested in trying it out, you can use this URL or you can find the link in the description box below. Thanks for hanging out with me while I shared a little of my geek philosophy about creating a D&D streaming template with Canva. And I hope you found some of these tips useful for your own live stream campaign. For today's quote, probably best known for his role as Spike on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I'll leave you with a quote from the actor, musician, and of course, my favorite audiobook narrator, James Marsters. In Europe, they call geeks smart people. And frankly, I think that we live in a culture that doesn't value intelligence enough so I am very proud in saying that I am a geek. Me too, James. Cheers.